Title of this lecture is chemoreception. It's going to end up being part one. Chemoreception part one. This is going to emphasize taste. We're going to talk about smell just briefly, but just to distinguish between the two. Um, but uh, what is what does this mean? Chemo. Smell and taste. That's what, yeah, that's what chemoreception means, absolutely, yeah. But what if we just focused on this word right here? What's that mean? What's that prefix mean? Where have you heard this before? Chemotherapy, or, yeah. Basically, what that is is cancer therapy where they're using chemicals of some kind to, uh, to administer the medication. So basically, chemoreception is another way of saying we are... Sensing what? Chemicals. Chemicals of some kind. And we have two different types. So we're sensing chemicals. Now, if we were insects, we would just use the antenna on top of our head and we would touch the things and we'd be kind of tasting and smelling stuff at the same time. They, they don't make a distinction between taste and smell for their chemoreception. Ours we do because, you know, unless you're, unless you're an infant, you, you don't want to taste everything you're trying to learn. You know, they do that. They're like, hey, what's that? There's a coin. Let me taste it. There's cat poop and so on and so forth. <laughs> they want to learn that way. We, we don't necessarily want to do that. Some things we're satisfied with just smelling. We don't need to taste everything. So there's two types. of chemoreception. And we've already said there what again? Uh-huh. Taste and smell. Yeah, give a little bit of space for those. We're going to right out to the side and take it down just a little bit. Now, we, because we need some scientific terminology for stuff, we're not satisfied with small words. Okay. Taste is also known as what? Gustatory? Yeah, yeah. Things that are referred to are gustatory. Taste is gustation. What word has gust in it? Disgusting. disgusting. If something is disgusting, it is literally distasteful. Right. How about this one? You guys ever seen the movie Ratatouille? Yeah. Okay, so the ghost chef guy that is like, yeah, Gusto. Now watch this. Jacques Cousteau was an explorer. So Gusto is an explorer of tastes. Yeah. Pixar has a lot of clever names like that. Like Robert Parr. You know, the guy for The Incredibles, they re renamed him, gave him the last name of Average. You know, anyway. So, <coughs> gustation. Chemicals dissolve, and this is, this is a big deal. In order to taste or smell anything, chemicals must dissolve and are sensed by taste buds. Taste buds in and of themselves are not neurons, but they're attached to neurons. If taste buds were neurons, that would be bad, because the mouth is not a great environment for something as sensitive as a nerve. Nerves would suffer terrible damage. There's enzymes, there's all kinds of acids you introduce into your, into your mouth from, from sour stuff, and, and there's really hot and really cold. So taste buds are a little more, a little tougher, but they also get replaced really quickly. Those cells can reproduce and be replaced. Then there's smell. Smell is what? What's, what's the name for that? I'll spot you a letter. Olfaction. 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 Chemicals dissolve and are sensed by.
cilia from the olfactory bulb which is cranial nerve number one cranial nerve number one so to taste or smell anything chemicals of that substance have to be dissolved in some way and this cup is an obsession of mine what is that? Coffee. Coffee. It's glorious. Its bouquet is simply delightful. Its flavor is utter ecstasy. It is altogether joyous. But without chemo reception, this is just a cup of brown liquid that I pour into my face. Okay? It doesn't do anything for me. But because I can taste it, I can taste the nuances of it, because I can smell it, it's really complex. And it's, there's a lot of things to be enjoyed about it. But I do need to make a distinction here. Much of what we call taste is actually smell. Much of what we call taste is actually smell. Somewhere between 80 to 90 percent. And I have to be careful of how I say that because it's like taste is taste and smell is smell. But nothing tastes like cinnamon because cinnamon's not a taste, it's a smell. Or mint or apple or any other type of flavor is really actually a taste. They're all smells. There's only five tastes. So taste. There are only five tastes. Uh-huh. If it doesn't fit within the category of one of these five, it's not a taste, it's a smell. So tell me one of these. Sour. So, oh, yeah, those are two of them. Uh, we'll start with sour. If you taste something sour, you taste sour because it is an acid. Very simple. You are discerning an acid. Does anybody have anything sour with them today? Sour Warheads, Sour Patch Kids, anything like that? Oh, I thought the odds were pretty good. Okay, if you look on the side, you'll see either malic acid or citric acid as the ingredients. Typically, they're covered in that powder stuff. That's powdered citric acid. That's what makes it sour. That's how we're able to distinguish sour. Not to be completely gross, but if you've ever thrown up, it's sour. Why? It's stomach, acid. stomach acid. It's basically telling you, hey, this is not great. <laughs> not that you didn't know that. Ugh, it's unpleasant. Um, but yeah, so if you're tasting something sour, you're tasting acid, something with a low pH. Okay. What's another taste? Sweet. Sweet. If we're tasting something sweet, logically we're tasting what? Sugar. Yeah, we're tasting sugars. Sugar, or in other words, a simple carbohydrate. Or saccharide. I'm going to misspell this. Two C's, maybe? That's probably not right. Simple carbohydrate or saccharide. See, folks, carbohydrates are... Uh, are really complex things that for the most part are like complex carbohydrates and fiber and stuff. They're basically a whole bunch of sugar molecules that are all stuck together by bonds. When we break those down, like if you eat pasta or whatever, your body breaks those down, separates these giant chains of sugar and breaks them down into the individual sugars so that we can use that to make energy. 
But if the sugars are already broken down, if they're already broken down in their simple sugar form, they taste sweet to us, like cane sugar or beet sugar or uh, honey, things like that have a lot of simple carbohydrates in them. Let me show you a picture here. Um, so, I think I will. And there's some variations of this that, that work too. Okay, so like, here's what, here's what tastes sweet to us. Things like that. These little carbon sugar rings like that. Glucose and fructose come together and they make sucrose. So little one and two uh, ring things like this. Glucose, fructose, lactose, galactose, uh, you know, dextrose, things like that. All are these simple things. Now, complex carbohydrates, what happens there is you get all these sugars stuck together in a big chain. Well, that stuff doesn't taste sweet to us. That's starchy stuff, you, you know, like pastas and potatoes and whatnot. They don't taste sweet. But if they're broken down, you know, uh, then, they're, then, they, then they end up sweet. Like sweet potatoes, they have the complex stuff in them, but they also have some simple sugars broken down in them as well. That tastes sweet to us. But it's not just sugars. What if I want something sweet, but I don't want the calories? What do I take? Yeah. Artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners can be things like Splenda, which is sucralose. What this is, is a sucrose molecule that's been modified. Um, instead of some hydrogens on there where they should be, uh, they swap those out with chlorine. And so our body would taste sweet to our tongue because the molecule looks uh, similar enough. But our bodies don't know how to break it down, so it doesn't actually give us any weight gain or calories from it. Splenda, um, what else? Equal. Equal is, is so this one is sucralose. This one is aspartame. Aspartame is even weirder. It is two amino acids stuck together that somehow tastes sweet to it. It completely messes up the formula, but it's modified in some way. It's really not good, yeah. Maybe, we're trying to pin stuff on all kinds of things like that. I just know it's not good for us and not natural. Well, sucralose really isn't either, but it goes through our bodies, it gets processed through. We poop it out or pee it out, it doesn't really go, really take a toll on us um, and then there's stevia is actually natural yeah um, I'm not sure how that works exactly um, Splenda equal sweet yeah sweet and low which is uh, uh, saccharin um, <coughs> and I'm not sure what that is I just think it operates the same way it's not something that we can break down plus a little goes a long way um, sweet and low. You can see why it's called that, saccharin. Maybe there's an H. Yeah, there's an H. Saccharin. Yeah, so this is the pink packet, the blue packet, the yellow packet. You don't see many of the blue packet anymore because people are fig figuring out it's not good for you. But have you ever noticed that these all taste sweet, but there's always something weird about them? Like, it follows with something weird. Like, that's sweet, but there's like a weird aftertaste or something unusual. That's your body's way of saying, listen, we know this isn't right. This isn't sugar. We know what sugar tastes like. Anyway. But, uh, yeah. And eh, moderation. Okay. Sour, sweet, what else? Salt. Salt. This one's simple. If you taste salt, you're tasting ions okay positive charge ions like what what kind of ions sodium sodium ions 
potassium ions, things like that, positively charged ions. Now, if you really overthink this, like, why wouldn't acids taste that way? Because an acid is, a, is, a, is hydrogen ions, right? Lots of hydrogen ions. Let's think about what a hydrogen ion is for just a second. What's a hydrogen atom made of? Hydrogen? Well, a hydrogen is made of how many protons? One. How many electrons? One. How many neutrons? None. Okay. A hydrogen ion, take away the electron. Basically, a hydrogen ion is just a proton. So you could say that sour is detecting how many protons are free in a solution. But here, here these ions are complex. Okay. So if you taste something salty, you're tasting a high concentration of ions, like ocean water. Lots and lots of ions in there. Okay, or your sweat, fair amount of ions in there as well. What's left? Bitter. Bitter. Bitter is usually unpleasant. Okay, there's a reason for that. Bitter, if you're tasting something bitter, you're tasting a base, something alkaline. And the reason that it really doesn't taste very good is most toxins are bases, are, are alkaline. Um, you know, soap and bleach and sodium hydroxide, those things don't taste very good because they're not good for your body and a lot of other things like that. So if we tasted something like that, it was an indication to our body, okay, hey, don't put that in. That's not good for us. All right. The last one is one you probably learned yesterday. What was it? Umami. Umami is a Japanese word for yummy. Yeah, salt, sour, sweet, bitter, and yummy. Um, this is when you're tasting, um, you're tasting proteins. And it can be variations of proteins, amino acids. Um, in addition, it could be things like this, MSG, as long as you're not allergic to it, monosodium glutamate, which is an alteration of an amino acid. This right here is savory. My mom can't smell. She has polyps in her nose. She smells like once a year. Yeah. Anyway, but she can tell if a, a soup is good or not based on this sensation. You know, because if it was just like a watery broth, because if you can't smell, you're limited to just these things. Sour, sweet, salt, bitter, and umami. But in a good soup, you can tell that there's something more to it than just salty broth. There is like some sort of flavor to it. But if you really want to know what umami tastes like, hold your nose and dump a little bit of a ramen packet on your tongue. You get some, some of the just plain salt, but there's also this savory sensation because all ramen has definitely got this in it, MSG. In fact, MSG is a lot of people crave this because it tastes really good. A lot of Chinese food has that in it. What's that now? It stands for monosodium glutamate. It's, a, it's an alteration of an amino acid. Is it bad for you? If you're allergic to it, it's bad for you. I really honestly thought for a long time that MSG was bad in whatever context, but it's really not. You know, I wouldn't, you know, make your whole diet based around it, but like. It's, it's really only bad for you if you're allergic to it. But some people that are allergic to it have all kinds of trouble with it, like terrible stomach cramps and headaches and vomiting. It's, it's rough for those that are allergic to it but, and those that are sensitive to it, but it's really not particularly harmful if you're not. Okay, except that like if you eat ramen all the time, you're going to end up getting a whole lot of what else? Salt. Salt. I mean, that stuff is like, if you read the side of the packet, it's like... like milligrams of sodium is like switched over to like kilograms of sodium it's 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 intense it's like one packet three times your recommended daily allowance of salt oh okay all right so i'm just exaggerating there i apologize to anyone at home that you know is offended and all right so that's basically taste tomorrow we're going to look at at smell and compare the two